We'll call the uh, recess agenda time workshop meeting order. Uh, we'll skip on through everything, and uh, we'll start with uh, approval of the consent agenda. Can we have approval of the consent agenda? James, help me out now. I'm not good at this stuff on this phone. Yes, sir. Happy, happy to help. And and as we as you prepare to, to move into the agenda, if it's all right, we'll go ahead and take a roll call so the public... Oh, can... yeah, that's right. I forgot. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So we'll... We'll start uh, for members by saying present. Uh, first off, of course, Mayor Bobby Owens. We've got Here. You, we got you done as present. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem Betty Selby. Here. Commissioner Richie Burke. Present. Commissioner Jason Borland. Present. Commissioner Daryl Collins. Present. Commissioner Christine Walker. Present. And Commissioner Eddie Mann. Yes, we understand. Okay, so we understand that we have six or seven uh, board members, and Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum present, and uh, and I believe you were prepared to move forward to item number yeah, two. Yeah, we have we have a quorum, and we'll move on to the consent agenda. Can we have approval of the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? A second. This is Jason. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Selby, a second by Commissioner Borland. All right, we'll uh, take a vote. All in favor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm happy to call the roll call for you. Uh, uh, we'll start off with Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Uh. And Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. All right. All right. The ayes have it. The uh, consent agenda is approved. We'll move on, James. Yes, sir. Item number three on the agenda. This is for information. And this is the department head reports. And for the members of the public, uh, there are written department head reports that are noted in the agenda package. And we certainly welcome the opportunity for folks to read through all those activities. Uh, we won't, because of our, our virtual session, we won't be able to have individual presentations, but in response to a, a previous uh, board member request, our spotlight video this month is uh, for the Manio Police Department on community policing. It's about a four minute video and we, uh, assuming the board likes this, we'll go ahead and post this tomorrow. Uh, it's all right, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know we have some folks participating remotely, so only a few people can see the video, but hopefully we can have some good audio so folks can hear, the, hear our, our upcoming spotlight. So all right. Like all right, thank you, sir. James? Hello, I'm... Yes, sir. James? Yes, Mr. Mayor? Will we be able to tell when it's concluded, the, pres the film presentation? Um, yes, sir, what I'll do, it's about, it's four minutes and 50 seconds, and what I'll do, um, is to go ahead. I'll I'll let folks know when it's over and yeah that's uh, yeah yes sir okay we'll Chief Vance Haskett with the Mantio Police Department. I'm here today to talk to you about some community policing. One of the ones that I'm the most proud of is Operation Helping Hands. This is a program where folks within the town limits can sign up for Helping Hands we assign patrol officers to visit them once a week. We're on our way to a residence for the Helping Hands program. It's basically we go to our older elderly adults in the community and we help them out with anything that they might need help with. And also to make sure that, you know, they're, they're safe and they're healthy. Incorporated into that Helping Hands program is the vial of life. It's simply a water <clears throat> tight container that is nice and bright and yellow and inside is some information some very important information it talks about their insurance their emergency contacts as well as all of their prescription medications they are taking this helps EMS a lot when they arrive on scene I'm Sergeant James Burroughs and I've been working with the Monday Night Alive program for approximately 15 years now representing Manio Police. 
And along with Dare County Sheriff's Office, we are here every Monday night after school, and we help with the tutoring of kids and uh, helping with homework and also reading to the kids. I am Lieutenant Brad Eilert with the Manio Police Department. We have business checks in town that we do day and night. Patrol officers check the businesses during the day, speak with those who commute to and from our, our jurisdiction in Manio to form relationships with those that work in the community. At night, we check those businesses again to make sure they're secure. We also have other initiatives that involve our patrol officers outside of the police department in which they involve and volunteer their time to the community. Every year we have National Night Out, the first Tuesday in August, which helps bring the community together to help solve crime. The police department can't be everywhere, so we count on our citizens and our children to be able to be comfortable and come forward to the police with information to help us solve those crimes. Also, our officers get out on foot. The weather's nice. They can actually interact with those that are in the community and visit within the community to help form a comfortable bond so information can be shared. Lastly, we have a radar trailer that we deploy when citizens complain about speaking. Recently, we had complaints from Sir Walter Raleigh. We were able to use that radar trailer to deploy into the neighborhood area and collect data to confirm when speeding actions were taking place and to take enforcement on those speeding actions. Another good community policing strategy that we have at the Manio Police Department is working together with the local banks in our town. We work with the local banks to come up with a protocol for the safety assessment of their banks for when the alarm is set off or any other such emergency. My name is Investigator Douglas Moore with the Manual Police Department. I'm also assigned to the K-9 unit. We've had Bosco now since July of 2014, and we've had some great success with him as far as recovering drugs, uh, tracking lost children. Um, but the most important thing about the K-9 program to me is the interaction with the kids. We've been in every single school on Roanoke Island doing presentations uh, for kids, um, and people love animals. They want to see the dog. They want to pet the dog. They want to talk about the dog, so it's an awesome opportunity for us to get out, interact with people, and let them know more about the police department, what the K-9 unit does. Another form of community policing that we have is Chief Haskin and I both sit on uh, boards that serve in the community. I sit on the DARE Challenge board. DARE Challenge is a faith-based drug and alcohol program. We get to help them, talk with them, and, and answer questions for them, and, and just be a positive impact on their future and, and rebuild that, that positive relationship that we should all have with our law enforcement uh, people that, that serve the community. And then Chief of Police uh, Vance Haskett sits on the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council and that board is, is designed to help juveniles in the community to try to steer them back to, to the right path and, and hopefully they have a positive future. I believe community policing is vital to a police department. It causes interaction with the public in more than just a negative way, it's a positive way. And they get to know each other. They get a relationship, which that is, in a nutshell, what community policing is about. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That concludes the video. And unless there's an objection from, from the board, we'll plan to get this out to tomorrow on our, on our website, on good. our YouTube channel, and on social media as well. That's good. Uh, well, are we ready to move into the presentation, Marshal Light? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. So, so item number four on the agenda for the public, this is for information purposes. Uh, this is a presentation, and uh, there is a representative from the Marshes Light community, Mr. Bob Keeney, to present today on Marshes Light Boardwalk and Park. Mr. Keeney? Thank you very much for allowing us to be here today. And I say us, actually, it's just me, unfortunately, today because of the situation. We can't have many of our community members here, but I'm sure they would be here in great numbers if we were able to do that. But <clears throat> thank you for doing this. I know it's very difficult to put on meetings uh, during this period of time, and uh, we really appreciate uh, all that you've done over the last several months, actually, and, and today in particular, so thank you. Um, wanted to talk a, a little bit about uh, Marsh's Light, the boardwalk, and the park. I am a homeowner in Marsh's Light uh, on Fernando Street. Um, wanted to, probably in the front end of this, I just wanted to mention that uh, I'm not here uh, to talk about the hotel situation, the issue at all. 
And I want to make that really clear. This has absolutely nothing to do with the hotel and the situation. I think that, uh, not the situation, but the uh, uh, negotiations, the discussions that are taking place with, um, with the developer at the current time. So I wanted to make that pretty clear up front. As you all, I think, know, Section 3 of the Conditional Use Permit outlines the responsibilities of Marsh's Light homeowners uh, to maintain the boardwalk in a 30-foot easement for the use of the public. Uh, this has created a, a seamless boardwalk, and in fact, it's really an extension of the, of the boardwalk that exists, has existed for many years in the town. In fact, most visitors and many residents do not realize that this portion is owned and maintained not by the town, but by Marsh's Light homeowners. And I, I know that for a fact, having questioned some of them when they, when they go down uh, uh, through, the, uh, the, through the boardwalk. The Town and Visitors Bureau market and encourage visitors and residents to use the entire boardwalk. We are <laughs> pleased to have provided this public amenity for many years and have watched visitors and residents enjoy its use. This past week, because of how hot it's been, uh, we've noticed many have been enjoying the water in addition to the shade of the trees and, uh, and, the, uh, and the benches that are there. So this is uh, really used quite a bit. Adults and children on a regular basis use the uh, Marsh's Light portion to access sailing classes, boating, fishing, the net shed, beach, biking, exercise, and just to enjoy the views. Uh, there is heavy use of the boardwalk during Dare Day, First Friday, July 4th and New Year's festivities, and boats are sometimes even docked at the uh, portion of the boardwalk, uh, Marsh's Light portion of the boardwalk as well. <clears throat> Let me get into the issue that, that we wanted to bring to your attention, one we've, uh, as homeowners, have talked about for quite some time. Although the town can obtain government grant programs from FEMA, CAMA, and other government agencies, no for rebuilding and repair of storm-damaged properties, Homeowners associations, like Marsh's Light, cannot. Uh, just recently, the town uh, replaced many of the, much of the boardwalk, actually, of the town's portion of the boardwalk, and CAMA funds were used, I believe, almost all the funds were CAMA funds to reconstruct the boardwalk, and it looks, looks great, of course. In the case of storm damage, Marsh's Light homeowners have been, and in the future would be, solely responsible for reconstruction of the boardwalk. In the case of significant damage, homeowners could face reconstruction expenses up to $1 million per storm. I expect there would be months, if not years, of delay in reconstruction as homeowners obtain sufficient financing. <clears throat> Marsha's Light homeowners are also fully liable for any accidents or injuries that occur on that portion of the boardwalk. With the heavy use of the boardwalk and beach, especially by children, this is a constant concern of, of homeowners. So having said that, we, we looked at several solutions that we thought would work. Uh, one being, uh, we thought possibly that uh, we could obtain FEMA funding. Uh, we did look into that. We had the, um, uh, the, the town manager at the time and the town attorney at the time did look in, in, in to see if that was possible and uh, it is not possible <clears throat> to obtain that kind of funding or any government funding for that matter. And then we looked at whether the town could take over the maintenance and the, and the liability without taking over the actual boardwalk, but could the town take over the maintenance and the liability of, uh, of that and then be able to obtain the grant dollars from FEMA and other uh, grant programs. We found out that no, that was not possible as well. So we looked at all of that. We also you know, discussed some other options available to us, uh, which are, were few and far between. We decided to go to Saga, who is the uh, declarant uh, of, of Marsh's current uh, developer, but uh, the, the own, own the uh, principal, principal ownership of, of Marsh's Light Development at the current time, to donate to the town a portion of the boardwalk. So we asked them to donate a portion of the boardwalk to the town. After some discussion, they did agree that that would be possible. And in fact, I have a statement from uh, Sumit Gupta, who is the chief executive officer of Saga Corporation, in support of the donation. We also more recently, just to, to double check with all the homeowners, we went out and did a survey of homeowners to make sure they're in agreement with this donation process, and we had 100% uh, 
uh, that we're in, in response, 100% we're in support of the donation. <clears throat> so with this land donation, the town would then be able to utilize the boardwalk as a new Mantiel Park for the enjoyment of all. And the town will be able to obtain government grant funds for any storm damage that may occur in the future. For example, benches, historical markers, uh, expanded beach area, a uh, children fishing pier, a, a, a kayak launch area possibly, and other non-commercial facilities, especially for children, which I think we're probably all in agreement, we need more facilities for children in this, in this community. And it could be offered by the town. There are facilities, these are facilities that Marshes Light homeowners would never be able to construct, maintain, and assume liability for. But they would be a, a tremendous amenity for residents of this town, and for visitors as well. So tonight we are asking the board to accept the donation of the boardwalk and to direct staff to work on the details with Marsh's Light homeowners and with Saga Corporation. We know that there will be uh, additional steps that will have to occur, including the uh, development of the D with conditions, uh, a public hearing, probably uh, a final vote. Uh, but we want to, we would ask you to start this process this evening uh, if at all possible. Now, the discussion we've had having to do with what portion of the boardwalk is, would we, uh, we, would we turn over? I'm sorry, I'm looking at a slide right now. What we're talking about is the portion that goes from where the Maritime Museum sailboats are located to a portion all the way around, <laughs> all the way around actually to the first slip near the marina. So it's actually more than what's shown there, but it goes all the way around to the first slip of the marina, which wraps, this portion of the boardwalk wraps around the, the two condo buildings. Now, when we start developing the conditions jointly, when we, uh, develop those conditions that are agreeable to all parties. The portion near the condos uh, is such a, a small, very narrow portion, we would probably want some additional restrictions of that portion. But the other area is pretty much wide open right now, especially in front of where the uh, multi-use buildings will be and where the hotel is going to be. Uh, there's, there's quite a bit of, uh, of room, there will be quite a bit of room to be able to use for some of these these facilities that I talked about earlier. But that would be part of the negotiations and the discussion. Tonight, I'm really just asking for a start of that process to get an initial view of, and a vote from, from all of you as to whether that would be possible or not. Okay. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Yes, I have one. Uh, this is Richie. Did y'all approach Saga about the repair for this? <laughs> Did y'all approach Saga Construction, <clears throat> the developer, about the repair for the dock? To repair the dock? Yeah. Well, they, Saga they, themselves. They do put in a portion into the into it. Right. But they're not going to be here forever. They're right. Be I, don't know, very... I don't know if they'd be willing to go ahead and rehab the dock since they are the, the developer of the area. I, I really, I'm sorry. I was just wondering how come Saga doesn't want to put money for this because they are the developer. Well, they are, they, are, they are putting money into it. They are. But they won't, they won't fund but the, the problem is going to be when we have a storm, and not if we have a storm, but when we do right. have a storm, that will be a, a substantial amount of money uh, that will come forward. And they're not going to be here forever. Uh, in fact, there is a, a date, and I forget the date offhand, but there is a, a, a date when they will be gone regardless of what happens. They will not have controlling interest any longer, I should say as far as uh, Marsh's life. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Can you uh, just, I know not everyone is in this room and uh, also to any folks listening in, the, the details of the dimensions you're talking about um, in terms of how wide that stretches away from the water and how long you're talking about going around past the little beach to the first, um, so around the corner, around the condos, right. to the first slip. Right. So beyond even what we're looking at here, correct? That's right. Okay. 
the there is a 30 foot it's from yeah. the, the edge of the boardwalk okay. where the water is back 30 feet so, so that's what we're talking yeah. about right where we are. but not the marina itself correct not the marina itself it would go to the first slip the marina Uh, this is Daryl. Um, this we've talked about this a few times, and uh, a lot of the uh, concern about the condition of the the, the boardwalk now. Uh, uh, we would we wouldn't want to get something that's we have to immediately repair it. Um, so any way we can access the condition of the of the boardwalk, and if anything's wrong with it, before we take it over, get Saga or somebody else to repair it before we take it over, if, if that's possible. Would Saga be willing to bring, Hello? Would well, Saga be willing to bring the whole dock up to standards before we take it over? Well, yeah, that's. that's I believe it is up to standards currently, and uh, but, but if if someone if someone was, uh, I mean, I, I just, you could ask for an engineering study to take a look at it, so to determine what does need to be done and uh, what additional uh, <clears throat> requirements there would be. Sure, I am. I'm not a construction by my dock construction by any any means, but this was the original dock, correct? That was put in when it was developed, which was probably. 2008 maybe something like that yeah so i think the dock has led its life and it, it i think the whole dock needs to be redone before we can even consider taking it over mm -hmm. or, you know to bring up the standards repair all repairs the what they call them with james the uh the tie bars that hold the dock back the dead man is that what they call yeah, them that, yeah that's yeah. one of, that's one of the one of the structural elements right. okay Well, I, you know, I'm not an expert either. I'm not, certainly not an engineer. I think they last more than like 12 years. The docks, there's plenty of docks around here that are much longer, older than that, including the dock that was just repaired, I believe. Um, uh, here is much older than that, I believe. But, but getting, getting an engineer in to take a look and to give advice, not a bad idea. No, we could we could do that during the uh, presentation. This is just a presentation tonight. How how long a process do you assume this would be, James? Even if I mean in this talking process. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Mayor. But I I know tonight is as you said tonight's not a um, it's not an action item or a motion item. But if the board wanted us to do, for example, to see if a marine engineer is available. Um, yeah. That's so, that, I mean, there are different sets like that, the legal process for accepting real property um, and terms and conditions. So, yes, sir, there would be multiple steps over the next. Uh, over All right, next walk, walk us through the steps as you would know. I, mean, I know you can't go through everything tonight, but walk us through the steps if you could. What's, yes. what's from the night of the presentation? Uh, say we got an engineering firm to assess the docks. The, the, and situations like that, how long do you think it would take? I'm, I'm just asking these questions because tonight we're not going to vote at all. Yes, sir. Um, so trying to think, some of these tasks can be done concurrently. So if the board wanted to move forward with feasibility, some of those initial tasks would include uh, a marine engineer coming out. And there may already been some work on that because I did note, since that's part of my, my walking, is uh, some boards, some of the decking material has already been highlighted in, in some paint. But a marine engineer could help us out with that easily within 30 to 60 days. Concurrent with that, we would, if the board, again, if the board wanted to move forward, there would be an effort to, uh, we've got the town attorney here uh, present with us tonight, and whatever, and the representatives of, of Marsh's Light and the, and the declarant um, um, would want to talk about terms and conditions. Also, the, there is an existing baseline survey, but some additional survey work would need to be done. Um, and then, of, so we would also then, following that, we would want to, once that information is available, so information on cost, information on legal issues, and uh, those things that the board needs to hear, 
then there would be a need for public, you know, the pu public hearing and. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, where I'm heading. You got to have a public hearing anyhow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then, um, and then of course, we would want to follow the North Carolina general statutes for acceptance of uh, real property as a donation. Um, so that's so. But it look it it, it, see, it feels like uh, it, uh, over a sixty to ninety day period that yes, can yeah. be done and and get that community engagement process following the initial stuff. I just know that even though tonight's not a night for uh, for voting uh, for voting because you don't have all the information, if if it's the desire of the board to to direct staff to start those processes, that costs money to engage a town attorney, a marine engineer, or or a surveyor. Um, then, then it's probably. I, I just would hate to start spending that money without some direction from the board. Okay. This, this is Commissioner Walker. Um, I just want to say it's, you know, totally understandable what um, Marsh's Light is presenting, um, and you know, of course, that is an asset to the town, whether it's owned by the town or. By Marsh's light, um, but I just, you know, again, I, I am concerned of uh, the cost, the total cost that it would be, you know, to um, to get it, you know, to a point where we could accept it um, without, you know, much liability. So that's, you know, that's my only concern uh, right now is, you know, how our budget is looking and you know, how things are going, whether or not, um, you know, it would be feasible or not. But it's totally, you know, like I said, it's totally, um, you know, it's a, it's a great asset and, and it needs to be, you know, needs to be maintained and uh, taken care of. But, you know, I think I think the budget needs to, you know, is the highest consideration right now. James? Yes, sir. James, could we not ask for, uh, of course, there's not going to be a vote tonight, but could we not ask for you to get a package together, what it would probably cost to assess the uh, docks and everything's involved as far as the cost before we even think about voting? And yes, then you come back to us and tell us about what it would cost us to, to look at it further one way or the other. Yes, sir, that, and that makes that makes great sense. Um, especially of course, I'm going to say I, I totally support it because I, I uh, but I don't have a vote. I think it would be ideal. I, I agree with uh, Christine a little bit about the budget because I don't know where the budget stands. I don't think any of us does now with this situation we have. But uh, it would be a continuation of Manio and the docks, which... Uh, uh, we would be in better shape if they had a storm. In all probability, Marsh's life, if they had a storm, would not fix the docks back because of cost. I don't know that, but many it would be in much better shape of getting uh, federal money and state money through uh, FEMA and other situations at, a, at no cost. We could easily repair the docks back much better than Marsh's Light could. And I just see it as a continuation of the whole waterfront, which would be part of many. But that's my feelings. Yes, sir. And, and to answer your question, I'm I'm absolutely happy to start gathering that information because. Well, that's up to the board. I can't tell you to do that. <laughs> well, this is Darrell. I agree. With, I agree with the mayor and a chance to go ahead and move forward with that. Just just find out what it's going to cost us. Yeah, Darrell. Yeah, that's good. Because I mean, really, at the at the next meeting is when we would be in a position to, you know, not necessarily say accept anything or, or but I mean. No, that's right, Jason. And, and I wouldn't even. Prepare, I would, Jason. Next meeting, I don't think we'd even be prepared to uh, make a decision. I think it would take us. Well, like James said, if we even got into it, it'd probably take sixty to ninety days minimum. Yeah. So this will get the ball rolling on yeah yeah that's on, it on seeing if we got legs to it well how does the board feel about it could somebody make a motion we just do we need a motion for that he's 
No, nope. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if it's all right with you, since we're not talking yet about the expenditure money or signing of a contract, I'm happy to gather this information so the board can good, 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 good information for decision making, and we'll be gathering that over the next few weeks. Is the board agreeable to that? Yeah, that sounds good to me, Mrs. Darrell. All right. Well, go ahead, James. I'm here from the board. I think uh, I am. I'm, I can't hear very good on this phone, but uh, I think it's agreeable with the board that you just proceed with what we're talking about tonight. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Direction, direction is clear. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, so next up on the agenda, item number five. It's Mr. Keeney? Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, we're, coming, we're coming forward. Have you got your mask on? Sir, <laughs> <laughs> sir, I, I do not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just joshing, just joshing. Go ahead, James. Thank you, sir. Item number five on the agenda, public comment. This item is for information. Members of the public are invited to address the board of commissioners on any topic. Public comment is not intended to require the board to answer any impromptu questions or to take any action on items brought up during the public comment period. Speakers will address all the comments to the board as a whole and not one individual. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Time limits are three minutes per person or five minutes per group. Please identify yourself and your location so your statements can be recorded. As we get into public comment period here, we will we will be identifying folks, but before we do so, folks are also allowed to, um, or encouraged to, submit written comments uh, before the meeting as well. And we do have one submitted, one submitted public comment, and if it's all right, I'll go ahead and read that before we get into the verbal uh, public comments. So this is the, the um, commenter, Susan and Steve Ehart. Uh, they are residents at the Marshall Light Condos, and it says, states as follows. As a resident of the Marshes Light Condos, my husband and I enthusiastically support the town taking over the Marshes Light portion of the boardwalk from Saga. We would like to see the entire boardwalk up to the marina be included. However, we do have some concerns as to the public use of the easement area closest to the marina, which is basically condo residence yards. Currently, the public walk, ride bikes, and walk their dogs in this area, which has presented no problems. Any additional use, picnic tables, children's play area, et cetera, would be a problem both for noise and safety reasons due to the close proximity to the marina. We're also concerned about the responsibility of the landscaping, grass, trees, shrubs, et cetera. The trees have been a huge issue between the condo owners and the master association. I hope these details can be resolved before a decision is made. We do believe the town can do a better job of maintaining and putting the boardwalk area to the best use for all residents and visitors to Manio. Thank you, Susan and Steve Ehart. And that's the only written comment I have. If it's all right, Mr. Mayor, we're going to look to the public to make verbal comments. Yeah, you, go ahead. You know what you, uh, Yes, sir. So for the members of the listening public, we can see the folks who are the attendees who've come in and we have, um, we have 11 attendees who've dialed in. And if you'd like to make a public comment, please hit star nine on your phone and it will raise a virtual hand so we can identify you by the last four digits of your cell phone or of your, of, your, of your phone. So anybody wishing to make a public comment, please hit star nine on your phone and we'll look for your hand to be raised. We'll, we'll, we have a hand raised and the last four digits of the cell phone appear to be 9399. So for the caller with the last four, the last four digits of your cell phone is 9399. You have been unmuted. You're welcome to make your public comment. Hi, my name is Scott Hill. I'm on the board of directors for the Marshall's Light Condo Association. And I'd like to say I appreciate the, the town uh, looking to move forward and look and get additional information in regards to the, uh, the town possibly taking over the boardwalk uh, that goes across Marsh's Light uh, area. Uh, thank you. And that's it. <laughs> thank you, sir. 
Next up, we have uh, there. We don't have any other hands that are raised at this point, but we'll give an opportunity for folks to hit star nine on their phones should they desire to make a public comment at this time. Seeing no hands raised, we'll try again. Anybody desiring to make a public comment, hit star nine on your phone, and uh, we'll have an opportunity to recognize you. All right, we're not seeing we're not seeing any any hands raised. All right, would, would anybody else love to be heard? All right, James, we'll close public comment period. Thank you, sir. Item number six on the agenda: Mayor and Commissioner's comments. This is for information. Yeah, I don't have any at all. Um, Christine? Yes, sir. Um, I just want to commend the police department, even though I couldn't see uh, the video, but I heard the audio and sounded like a great uh, presentation and um, a great thing to have available to the public as well to let them know what all the police department does. <laughs> Okay. That's all that I have all right. tonight. Betty? I have nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Richie? Uh, I, I have one thing, Mr. Mayor. Um, you all probably saw the email from Nicole Northrup about the trash between the Causeway and the, the Manor Causeway. I was just wondering, is there any way that we could coordinate with the, with the county or the state to kind of take care of this for us? Is that is that for cleaning up? Down by the, uh, I, I couldn't understand you, Richie. What is it by cleaning up the causeway? Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, I agree with you 100%. I hope the board, I, I I was hoping we could bring it up sometime about maybe talking to James to see if we could get into it since we do, we, we, uh, Pirates Cove is part of our uh, district or city and we sh we should be able to do something but I guess we'd have to ask James to look into it see what the possibility is yes yes sir mr. mayor and and when this issue first came up about a year ago I had indeed coordinated between DOT and their county I acknowledge the road is outside our jurisdiction but it does front Pirates Cove which is well within our jurisdiction in fact one of our new entrance signs is right there so to the motoring public they're probably unaware of the jurisdiction of the road they just think they're entering manio at that point and we certainly want to uh we, we certainly value our, our friends at pirates cove as part of the town um at the time of, uh, we were under the we were understanding that dot used to have a contract in fact there used to be a dedicated person for that particular <laughs> area and uh, okay james i'm gonna cut in on you these people are doing a terrible job uh, that's a uh, horrendous uh, job they're doing it's unbelievable poor poor job but i'm just going to put that in there in my feelings yes sir and i, I think uh, I, mean, I, I once the the person who was in charge of that was lost to retirement that was not person was not replaced and it was placed under a general contract unfortunately we've we've seen publicly the reductions in in dot funding especially in the current crisis so it's it's unlikely we're going to have any replacement there um, some options such as, you know, signage warning people about fines. Um, I wish we could get the speed limit a little slower along there, but that's certainly a DOT responsibility or, or DOT um, uh, issue, issue that we would have to ask for. But in terms of the actual well, trash, our only alternative is to try and, I don't know, hire someone, especially in the, in the peak months, to do that. But well, that, uh, as, far as, as far as Rich's request, uh, couldn't we just leave it up to you to look and see about the possibilities that we could do or not? What, what, James, what could we do? Right, right. Yeah, the response we got from both those jurisdictions before was, was a no um, in terms of additional. It would just be picked up in the regular cycle. But as, as you've noticed and the, the letter writer noticed and, of course, the mayor noted, it's uh, certainly, we're seeing volume, and especially now, volume of trade for all the visitors. So, I mean, if you'd like me to look at ways to hire in, hire in that to supplement what's done, I can certainly look into that. To, well, know. we could we could just look into it. I I, I would like to commend Miss North of this. That's her name and her group and the uh, the uh, I think Outer Banks Conservationists, whoever they were, helped her out that day. Uh, uh, but it, it, you could tell a Devers house they clean it up. I agree with Richie. If we could do something, I'd like to, but we'll, 
I guess we have to think about money considerations. Yes, sir. I'm happy to investigate that, and and I, and I agree. I certainly commend Ms. Northrop because um, she's been working on this both with some volunteer groups as well as with an established organization. And I, I have to commend any citizen that rolls up their sleeves and picks up trash or plants flowers or or makes those kind of contributions. So my hats off to the folks who volunteer their time for that. Well, why don't you just take your look into it, see what could be done, bring it back to the board next meeting. Yes, sir. No obligations nowhere. <clears throat> That's fine. Perfect. Thank you. Is that all right, Richie? Perfect. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Jason? Yeah, just continuing off that, um, and I, I guess we'll talk about it more next time. And, and James and I spoke about this a little bit. Um, it is, it, it's, it's tough when people, their property aren't taking care of it. It looks like it's our yard. Um, we're short staffed and, um, you know, this year's unlike any other. And uh, so trying to keep things um, purse strings tight. And so having to have a resource to go clean up somebody else's yard is, is, is tough. And uh, um, like you said, all, all credit to um, Nicole and, and the volunteer groups that have, have done it. Um, so hopefully there's something we can figure out. I don't know, maybe there, again, it's not our <laughs> road, but maybe. <laughs> kind of, uh, no, it's, it's DOTs, but they have done a horrendous job. It's unbelievable. I, I, I just, I'm disappointed in the contractor myself, but, I can't do anything about that. I don't have anything to do with it. We don't have anything to do with it. Like that, to, to have, promote, you know, somebody to take, you know, and, and see what we can do, get creative. Um, so, yeah, definitely that. And, you know, the, the police do such a great job here, and I have young kids, and it's it's great when, you know, the, the cops go by and, you know, they get the... <laughs> Bosco or, uh, or or whatever is going on um, it's just uh, it's such a good interaction we have with our community and um, national night out last year <laughs> such a great event um, and I I assume that's going to fall to the wayside this year um, so I don't know what we can do to um, just show community appreciation there but wanted to echo what Christine said and then I uh, look forward to Talking more about the Marsh's Light thing um, as we explore it, I think it is already, uh, um, it's a huge asset for to, to the town. It's something that the, the town uses that we promote um, and there's an opportunity for it to be even more of an asset. Um, so I hope we can find a way to figure it out because we, we don't want to take something that's going to cost us a, a you know a, a huge amount of money you know we're talking about a few dollars for cleaning up the highway uh, and you know okay. to take that and the next sentence could say we should uh, pay a million bucks to fix a boardwalk I hope we can find a way to m make it work and I look forward to uh, to going down that path and uh, appreciate Marsh's light and, uh, and, and Bob coming here tonight and that's all I got all right Daryl uh, just trying to echo on, on about the trash pickup. You know, the town has two annual trash uh, cleanup uh, programs every year. I think it's in the spring and the fall. And uh, Miss Sarah Benson is the, is the person who spearheads that. And maybe James, if he could maybe contact uh, Miss Benson. And I don't, this is kind of a far-fetched idea, but maybe if somehow we could incorporate that annual annual uh, trash pickup to cover that part of the uh, the area uh, leading to Parts Cove. Okay. James? Yes, sir. I got a suggestion. I, I didn't have any comments in the beginning, but I got a few now. How would it be, would be, we be off base if the town officially wrote a letter to DOT to tell them about our dissatisfaction with the trash pickup on the causeway? Yes, sir, I can certainly contact. I've got a, in working with DOT, my, my latest contact has been uh, kind of helpful in terms of acting as a clearinghouse. Where do we go for different things from encroachment permits to traffic control? So how about if I reach out to that person and see what kind of assistance? Well, I we have. might. You might be able to reach out to the contractor. He might not be aware. Maybe he'd put a little more effort in picking up a little better on the causeway. 
I don't know. I, I think it's, it's worth a try. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm happy to follow up with DOT. All right. Uh, anything else come for the board? I guess, do, James, do we adjourn or recess? Yes, uh, there will be a motion to adjourn the meeting until August 5th at 6.30. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, can I ask, this, this is Christine, yeah. we, typically don't, we typically don't meet in August. Um, are we? So is me. <laughs> well, I mean. How's yeah, the board feel to... about it? Mr. Mayor, if I, please, please forgive me. Um, uh, uh, just a point of uh, Point of privilege. I, I, I acknowledge the the tradition um, on the August meetings, and I and I greatly respect that. Um, with the current crisis, though, we have a number of important agenda items already on okay. Okay. Our agenda for August, proposed for the agenda on August fifth. Um, so, if while while I believe it's likely that the meeting on the nineteenth, there wouldn't be any such agenda items. Um, unfortunately, the fifth does have a, a number of, of of pretty hot topics. Christine? That's fine. Yes, I just wanted okay, to well, you know, make sure uh, uh, because that. All right, because I'm with you, Connor. Uh, 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 all right, we'll, we'll ask uh, for a motion to uh, adjourn till August the 5th at 6 30. This is how I move it. All right, is Darryl, that... I'll, I'll second his motion. This is Christine. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Go ahead. You've got it recorded, James. Yes, sir. So uh, in, in terms of the motion to adjourn, um, I'll go to Mayor Pro Tem, aye or nay? Aye. Yes, to Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. Come in. Did, did somebody say something? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, it looks like you've got a unanimous vote to adjourn the meeting. Okay, we'll declare ourselves adjourned until August 5th at 6.30. Meeting adjourned.